after months and months of saying I was going to try it out, I'm finally trying out Wayland, and I'm doing so through Sway. Now, whenever I need to change a layout or anything like that, you're going to see me look over to the side. The reason for that is because of a serious design defect in the way that Wayland functions, but I'll get into that in just a bit. So if you don't know, Sway is a Wayland compositing window manager, basically a compositor and a window manager merged together, built on the WL Roots library. And make sure you keep that library in mind. Knowing that library is fundamental to getting basically anything to function. Now, my thoughts on Wayland are going to be broken down into two parts. First part is going to be this video, where we're going to focus on WL Roots Wayland itself, what it's good at, what it's bad at, and where I think it can improve. Second part is going to be focused on Sway itself, because I have a lot of thoughts on both, and I think this video would be way too long. Just so the Wayland guys don't hate me straight away, let's talk about some of the positives. One of those positives being X Wayland. I have no idea how X Wayland is so incredible and works basically seamlessly. The setup, everything is seamless. So if you don't know, X Wayland is basically a little X11 server that you can run alongside things like Sway or River or Wayfire or Gnome or anything like that and basically run any of your legacy X applications. So things like, say, my launcher, for example, which right now, why is it on the wrong screen? Okay, it's on the wrong screen. Which right now is D menu. Or, for example, you could run a terminal like Alacrity that might not have a Wayland version. I know in the past there were issues with X Wayland and NVIDIA drivers, but at least on the AMD side, everything works basically perfectly. I say basically perfectly because I have noticed there is a slight delay. It does seem to take longer to load applications than it would on a pure X environment like, say, Awesome WM. That might just be, you know, one-off things. I haven't done any proper testing yet, but that does at least seem to be my experience. And at least on my GPU running AMD drivers, there is absolutely no screen tearing whatsoever, which is sort of to be expected considering that Sway has the built-in compositor and that compositor has VSync that cannot be disabled. Basically, the same result can be achieved over on Xorg running a good compositor like, say, Pycom, but even so, some people still did see screen tearing like that, and I have heard some instances of screen tearing on Wayland, so it's not like Wayland completely eliminates it, but it certainly seems to be far less of an issue. Speaking of issues, let's talk about security. If you go and ask your Xorg server what it thinks about security protocols, what it's going to do is look up the definition of security. It has no idea what that means. Security does not really matter to Xorg. Wayland, on the other hand, sort of takes the exact opposite approach and make security one of its selling points. One of those situations is with hotkeys, where it has no global API for getting keystrokes, and this is to avoid keyloggers. What this also means is it breaks tons of applications and they cannot function. But even though the Wayland specification doesn't, basically all of the Wayland implementations, all of the Wayland libraries do have their own extensions that add in that support. So things like WL Roots, which I'm using, or LibMutter for GNOME, or KWayland for KDE. But what this also means is applications need to be built with all of these different solutions in mind. Otherwise, what you get is I have hotkeys bound in OBS, this button stopped my recording. As you can see, the recording is still going. This changes my layout. None of these work because OBS has nowhere to find out those keys are being pressed. But keep in mind that is only true for global bindings, bindings that function outside of the application being focused. If we're instead talking about something that is a local binding, say on my file manager when I go and press numpad zero, it creates a new folder, that will work because right now the application window is focused and it is able to read the keystrokes. OBS is my personal pain point, but there are plenty of other applications with this exact same problem. Now, in the case of OBS and plenty of other popular applications out there, there may be a workaround solution. So there are two things for OBS called OBS CLI, which hooks into the OBS plugin OBS WebSocket, basically turning OBS into like a, a web server. So you can go and control it with this CLI application. 
problem is the WebSocket requires 5.0.0 to build because the newest version of OBS doesn't support the older versions and OBS CLI only works with the older versions of the extension. So right now, there's no solution. More security seems like it's always great to strive towards, but security is always going to be trade-off against usability. In some cases, that might not be a massive trade-off for the amount of benefits you get. For example, a password is a minor price to pay to make it so someone can't just log into your account with just a username or just an email. But when it comes to this keystroke issue, I feel like it's taken security way too far and made it so from a user perspective, this feels like a bug or just a design defect. And this is the reason why I physically cannot main Wayland until this issue is addressed. This makes recording videos and doing live streams really, really inconvenient, and I don't know how I can work around it. I don't think a global API for keystrokes will ever make its way into the base Wayland spec, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. What I think Wayland needs is something for keystrokes like Pipeway is for video, because this is another problem that Wayland had. There was no way to capture your desktop. The reason why you can see my desktop right now is because of Pipewire. And now Pipewire is slowly becoming the accepted standard for doing video capture and screen sharing and things like that inside of a Wayland context. That's what I feel like needs to happen with keystrokes. Some sort of API that everybody can implement, then applications can build against, and everything just works. Maybe you don't want it always there. Maybe add it as like a compile option and users who don't need it can just have it disabled. Now let's talk about gaming. Once I dug through forum posts for like an hour or so and worked out why things weren't working properly, it worked great. Problem is that out of box experience was genuinely terrible because nothing worked. Now this was a slightly different issue, but when I launched IS-8, it completely locked up Sway, and it did that a couple of times. But once it got past that, after like a minute of being frozen, it was okay. Problem is, when I got into the game, this happened. The mouse doesn't work. At all. I can't click anything. Cursor is on the screen just fine, but nothing's working. Also, for some reason, the graphics are glitching out in the background as well. Not sure why that's happening. So I thought, huh, that's strange. Let's try another game that has the exact same problem. Now, if I went and plugged a controller in, the problem would go away. If I use my keyboard, the problem goes away as well. The problem is a lot of these games do not work well in Wayland because of Proton and Wine. These games expect there to be a primary monitor set, and Wayland doesn't do that. But with a native game like, say, Hollow Knight, no problems whatsoever. It's specifically about how Proton and Wine interact with Wayland. Luckily, there is a relatively easy fix. Basically, all you do is you run X Wayland Force to force applications to run through X Wayland, which isn't a good solution, but it's basically the only one you've got. And then you go and run xrander dash dash output, and then which of your monitors you want to be using. In my case, xwayland0 relates to the monitor directly in front of me, and we set that to be my primary. This pretty much just fixes the issue. And aside from the game just being generally a little bit jank, now everything is working like it should be. All of that stuff has been annoying enough, but the biggest problem I've been having with Wayland is that Wayland isn't a real thing. Now, following with this metaphor, Wayland is like a burger. We can all agree on what the concept of a burger actually is, but that doesn't say, you know, how the burger is made, what's inside of it, how it tastes, where it's made, or anything like that. Wayland is exactly the same. Wayland is just a specification. What we actually mean when we say we're using Wayland is we're using something like LibMutter if we're using GNOME, KWayland if we're using KDE, WROOT if you're using something like Sway, for example, or a bunch of the other projects out there as well. These take the base concept of what we know as Wayland and then implement it and extend it in ways that they want to do. What this means for the user is you need to know exactly what you're using. For example, over on Xorg, I made use of Flameshot to do my screenshotting. Flameshot has Wayland support, 
but right now it's experimental support for both GNOME and KDE. No WL roots. All of the GNOME tools, at least most of the GNOME tools, are built specifically with GNOME in mind. The KDE tools are built with KDE in mind. And this makes it really, really annoying to find applications that you can use. Now, not every application is going to be like this, especially things that don't need to interact with these extensions. But when you're looking at doing things like screen sharing or screenshotting or using any of these extensions to Wayland, you need to know what you're actually based on. But due to Wayland still being relatively young and all of these implementations constantly changing, a lot of the information you'll find out there is going to be really separated apart and in some cases quite out of date. Maybe the solutions still work, but they're not the best way to approach the problem anymore because there's not just a centralized location with all of this information. And wikis will get updated as time goes on, but a lot of the time, especially the really new information, hasn't made its way to places like the Arch Wiki, the Gen 2 Wiki, and places like that. All of that was a long way to say, I am going to keep using Wayland, but I'm not going to be mating it. You're going to see me jumping back and forth in videos. For the most part, when I'm doing something about Wayland or about Sway or anything in that world, then I'll be using the Wayland counterpart. But for anything else, I'm going to keep using Xorg. It is just far, far more convenient to make videos. I think WL Roots Wayland has potential. When you're not dealing with any of the rough edges, it works really, really well. But the rough edges are fairly common and they're really, really rough. So you're going to run into them fairly quickly, and for most users, it's going to be enough to just send them back over to Xorg. But maybe you disagree, and I would love to hear why. So let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.